Brothers and sisters, misses and misters, welcome back to the Dented Can Show. He's Max, I'm Doby, you're you. Between your ears in cyberspace, we got coming to you another F word as we go through the alphabet, which you kind of grew organically, and today's word is... Well, we did father. We did that. This one's family, and it's some, it's a suggestion that you made uh, because father took up so much space. And we went in another direction because grandma came out of that right. in my world, and your father, you catch your grandpa, and I think it's all intertwined. I do. I ask this question, who has a functional, normal family? Nobody. I think sometimes, and I, and I almost blame television for it, they set up these unreachable standards in our generation it was the brady bunch or the the leave it to beaver and those shows aren't on anymore if you're younger what are you talking about but you know that that uh stereotypical family where everybody gets along and there's, there's a cosby show well look where that wound up in real life right you know, what, what oh came my gosh. on yeah what came on in real life you know and, and but on the show it was a perfect family so from the dented can perspective and to reframe this uh family is tough, right, for a dented can? I yes. mean, for somebody who's basically a tortured soul or damaged, uh, it's tough. Family Having family relationships. Would you not agree that the family relationship is a recurring thing over time? Now, I've known you quite a few years. You've known me. I know a lot of your situation. I've spent time at your home with your family, who I enjoy, like, very much. Hope they like me a little bit. Just don't tolerate. Well, that's dad's friend. We'll just tolerate him. You know, my point is, you can kick me out. I don't have to show up when I'm in town. Family, you know that Christmas and whatever the holidays are, Thanksgiving, you're going to be with those people that you clash with. There's going to be fights and scabs are going to be picked off for years or even decades, and it's going to get really ugly really fast. What do you do? I've hit this stride. I don't know if uh, it's old age or it's all of the, the bike riding, uh, or the exercise, or the journaling, or the reading the Bible, or the church group that I'm in with some men. I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe it's all of those things together. Mm -hmm. But uh, number one, it's not about me. That's been the big message for me. It's not about me. And when I take the focus off myself, things become more clear. And I can honestly say that... Uh, when I'm looking at someone else and I'm ready to be the judge and jury and condemn them or clip them from my life, I'm not looking at my own transgressions very clearly. I don't look at myself with clarity. And I feel like that's what uh, a lot of dented can suffer from uh, because they're so damaged, they're so hurt, that's their identity. They're focused on that more than they're focused on rising above it and going, okay, how do we sort this out? Sure, there are bad people. There's no question. Uh, but the people that I have demonized or treated poorly are not bad people. So it's different for me now. It's, and I'm just in the very beginning stages. But it's different for me now. I look at it differently. Uh, so what, what do you feel like uh, is what's holding you back because I know we're going to get to R, which is reconciliation. We'll save that. But I know that there was a time in your family, because you've shared it with me, that you felt really alone. You know, like you didn't have anyone in your family at all. Siblings, parents, grandparents, they had their Grandparents deceased. had passed. Yeah. I, I I, they were raised me. I was on my own since I was 17. I never lived with my siblings. I would visit them on school vacations and stuff, and it was just a tumultuous relationship. And uh, my older brother and I never had a problem, but he lived his own life. I would see him a couple times a year. We'd go out to dinner or something and get along really well. My sister did not talk to me for 20 years. My, my younger brother, Bruce, and I didn't speak for 30 years. And I, not, I never thought I'd see him. The last time I remember seeing him, I had him by the throat up against the wall saying, if you talk to me again, I'll kill you. What a great brother relationship. I probably know? wouldn't call you either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, got, it took a lot to get to that point. Right. And a lot of pain. Yeah. And I under, like you said, you just got through saying exactly what hopefully all of us will go through. I went through a change. I was different. I felt that way. But my sister, the whole time in 20 years, uh, we'll talk about more in, in detail later, but I would write her letters. Is, Look, you know what? I, can we just get to get just, I, I want to end this, the suffering. You don't have to like me. You don't have to invite me over for Christmas or Thanksgiving, but just, I, I don't want to have any hostility. Nope. Nope. You said never now talk to me again. I'll never talk to you again. And it took 20 years. 
and we got together and it's a, it's a heck of a story because it has a happy ending. We're great now. As we record this, I saw younger brother Bruce and older sister Tammy last night and we had dinner and it was great and we laughed and there are no smoldering issues and nobody's waiting for anybody to punch the wrong button and then go off. That's all gone now. And I want to stress that because there is hope. And I tell the story to other friends that, that have the same problems. It's not going to work for everybody. I'm sorry. You know, maybe your mother or your brother or whoever, maybe you won't be close again. And I hope you are, and I hope you get to feel what I have. A lot of things I'll never feel. You had kids. You'll have grandkids. That's wonderful. I'll never have that in this world. I think, again, you have to look at what you have, and it's hard to do that because it's easy. What I don't have, I want this, I want this. Well, I have the sibling relationship I always wanted. It's medicine in my soul. Max, it's the wonder, it's the most, the number one event of my life was reconciling with them. And it took 20 years to make it happen. And I got rejected and I got humiliated and I got shot down time after time, but I never gave up because I knew what I wanted. And I think there's something about that in life too. If you really know what you want, nothing can stand in your way. It was meant to be, but it wasn't, oh, here it is. Oh, it's all good now. No, it took a lot of hard work, and all of us know that now, and it's going to have a very happy ending. So hopefully someone that's with us will have that as well, but everybody won't. You are in touch with what you did to precipitate their distance. So you're in touch with, you are you recognize that you were the cause of some of that distance as Not well. Not initially, but a big part of it as time went on, yeah. I played my hand completely poorly and and so you know like I claim you said it, i take i take full responsibility right. and i think that's i think and, and you can't claim i don't think it's realistic to ever say uh that you're going to claim someone else's shortcomings no, like no. I you claim can't mine. claim mm -hmm. what your father did to no. you for instance mm -hmm. right right you can only claim how you felt about it yeah. and what you did mm -hmm. we are not mental health professionals nope. we are just trying to muddle our way through this life and we're trying to you know get rid of being bitter and get better. And so we're hoping to create a community based on that. That's all we're trying to do here. So please, in the comments, if you have comments, uh, whether they're critical or whether they're statements from your own experience, please put them uh, in the comments section. Dobie will read them. I won't read a single one. I won't read a single one of them either. And I mean that, <laughs> no, I'm, I mean that with uh, love in that we're going in such a good direction. And we yeah. realize you have feelings. And there's always haters. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we have, That's you know, right. Who cares? Oh, you're, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. None of us claim to be perfect. You and I surely don't. Yeah. And we've had so much positive uh, re results on your end and on my end. And complete, everybody's life is differently. So we're yeah. talking about a lot of different things. So hopefully one of us will strike a nerve in every episode with somebody watching. So the family. F family. Getting back to family. Uh, do you see your family... Uh, improvement as as time goes on is it is it you're improving and because like like we talked about in past episodes you really want to love your family you want to love your you want to think your mom and dad are superman and superwoman don't you think and your siblings are perfect and you're all going to win the lottery and live happily ever after it's when the shit comes down is when you really have to stick together and that's when it's hard well you know dented cans want the world to change yeah and in order for the world to change, you have to change. Yeah, that's that's the that's the key. Mm -hmm. That's the key to it. That that is the key. And it's so hard sometimes when you've spent your life being hurt and alone, and and not really trusting anyone to talk about your real feelings. You know, we've talked a couple of times in a couple of these episodes about the inner voice, which is so real. That's the voice that we all listen to. Okay. You even made a joke and said, well, depending on which voice, that's not a joke for some people. There are many voices in their head for some people, you mm -hmm. know, and some of those voices are the voices from the past. For instance, your dad, Russ, is a voice that still has an effect on you today because you let it because I let it. You know, the pain we let that we let those things keep playing in our life. We don't have to. And I think, you know, you mentioned you talked about your grandma in the previous episode and how she changed, you know, just changed. Remarkable. I've never seen a human being change for the, for the good that much. I believe, again, I believe is that the voice has changed inside her. Her inner voice changed. Mm -hmm. She wasn't answering to uh, a dictator anymore. She wasn't answering to pain anymore. She was free. <clears throat> 
And when she became free inside her own head, she was able to set other people free. And that's what I'm after. That's what I'm after because me personally on my quest, because if you lose the attachment for others, a hundred percent and lower the expectations in your family, a hundred percent. What is there to get disappointed about? Then when you're with them, you can just celebrate them. You can love them. You know, you're not worried about what they're going to do for you. You're not worried about them meeting your expectations. You're just like, that's a flawed human being, just like I'm a flawed human being. I don't have any expectations for them anymore. What really worked for us and still works for us is we know we're flawed. We share a lot of the same sources of flawness, if that's even a word. And uh, last night, for example, as we record this, we just sat around and, and Bruce, my younger brother, made a great meal. And he's got a talent in the kitchen, and we laughed, and we had a great time. And our other brother Larry's in a nursing home, and we talked about how much we miss him and how much we love him. And we're a family unit for the first time, and we didn't need, we don't need parents for that. Is that weird? That that's where the source of the dysfunction was. We came together, and it's magnificent. I cannot put into words the feeling of wonder. I wish that on everybody watching or listening, and I wish it for you. And you're having a lot of it too. Now, do you need people that you have to? Do you, do you have people that you need to reconcile with? Uh, the list is getting shorter. Yeah, great. Which is nice. That's a victory. I don't think it's ever going to be everybody. Well, with, with every, anybody. There's I mean, in- I, I, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that I have let my pain and, uh, my overreaction, um, affect, you know, and, and I'm responsible for me and I'm responsible for those apologies. Yeah, would you agree though that as as time goes on, even if you're in your early twenties, you you'll have relationships with people, and the in laws become part of your inner circle, mm-hmm. technically family. You don't have anything to do with those people. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, your mom remarried, so you have technically a stepfather. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember uh, we'll talk about mothers in, a, in an episode. Uh, my mother's situation is horrible, but she remarried, and there was one day when my sister and brother and I got to meet the uh, the stepdad. And we didn't even know our mother very well. We had spent maybe three days with her in our lives. And the stepfather happened to have a club foot. Okay. So for years, we always made jokes. When you trip, hey, club foot, what's wrong with you? So the guy uh, walked in the room. We had dinner in his house. And he tripped. And my brother said, hey, what happened, club foot? And he really had a club foot. And that shut him off. And he didn't mean anything. It was just, it was a joke. It was meant as a joke not taken that way we never saw him again we never saw her again that's unfortunate but you see what i'm saying but that it wasn't it was nobody's fault and that's family thing and that's how they reacted and you think that's why the ones that are your blood family that you have a long history with it's really important if you can be on good terms with them because that's that's where it's the deepest that's where the bond is the deepest it's supposed to be anyway well hopefully there was an opportunity for him to say hey i'm sorry i said that that was wrong of me to say and and no he never did but there was no opportunity apparently we were kids cut off you know if you can uh in if you're having problems with family uh you know Maybe maybe this will work. Maybe it won't. Uh, but assume your part. Yeah. Take responsibility for yourself. Realize that it's not about you. <clears throat> this isn't about you. It's not about any one of us. You know, uh, it's, about, uh, it's about others. And when you get stuck on yourself, the people that I've been around most of my life who are the most miserable are the people who are most focused on themselves. Uh, the people who are focused on others consistently seem to be happier. And so for me personally, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to move out of that space I've occupied for 50 years and move to a new space and be more uh, based in service for others. Could you please repeat that? I was thinking about what I was going to have for lunch. <laughs> little humor there. Very little. It's a deep topic, Max. I'm sorry about it there. I, I know, <laughs> That's why we're here. And I don't mean to make like, light of it. But and, and one thing I'll add to what to the brilliant thing that you just said is unconditionally accept the others in your family. And we talked about that 
you know, don't have to poke fun at their faults and they're perceived that they like certain things or don't like certain things. You love them for who they are. And man, it works great when you do that. Love you, buddy. Love you too, man. All right, man. We are the Dented Cans. Like, if you do like it, ple- press like, subscribe to us. The little ding dong will go off in your head along with the voices. That means, hey, those two idiots are back again. We'll have a lot to say. We appreciate you. Be in touch with us. We want to form a community here. We've done really well. We want you part of it. We'll be back the Dented Cans on your ear.